Okay, welcome everyone. In the next 45 minutes, uh, we will be talking about uh, Apache Mahout. And more specifically, we'll be talking about how to do text clustering and how to sort of uh, configure Mahout to do this because it requires like several steps. And I will sort of give you a walkthrough on how to configure each step. First, a little bit about my background. Uh, I am uh, Frank Scholten. I'm a software developer at Dutchworks, formerly known as JTeam. We had a name change a couple of weeks ago. Uh, also, I'm a blogger at searchworkings.org, which is uh, a community site for search-related um, stuff like blogs about Lucene Solar, Mahout, Wear, all this kind of stuff. So if you're interested, you can check it out sometime. And of course, I'm a Mahout user and contributor. So the agenda we have uh, for the next 45 minutes will be uh, about three things. First, I will give you a sort of a rough introduction on clustering. Then I will introduce what, what Mahout is, what you can do with it. And finally, I will uh, sort of show you a demo on how to cluster the dump from Stack Overflow. Okay, so first an introduction. Let's say we have a lot of data and um, you would like to know what's in it. I mean, usually you would have maybe some kind of search engine and you, you would know uh, what you were looking for. So you could just enter a query and you would get some results. But imagine you, you would just have lots of data and you're just curious to get a, like a nice overview of, of what's in the data set. That's basically what you can do with clustering to give you sort of a high level overview, like how your data is structured. So to go into a bit more detail, um, clustering is a, is a way to sort of group and summarize your, your, your data. It's, uh, it's a technique from machine learning and um, uh, more specifically unsupervised machine learning. So you're not telling uh, like a clustering algorithm up front what it should look for, but it will just grab your data and it will figure out a bunch of clusters for you. Although there are some ways to sort of tweak the process, I will get into that later, but in general, uh, you put in your text and it will figure out some clusters. And um, below is also a quote from Wikipedia. So the idea is you, you have a bunch of subsets of your data and ideally the, the observations or the items in a subset are very related to each other while other items in different cluster are sort of not, not that related so that you have like a clean separation of uh, different items. And clustering is used uh, in many fields and many applications. Uh, for example, you have uh, market segmentation to sort of figure out like what kind of clusters your customers are in. Um, it's also been used in biology to identify species, uh, machine vision, motion detection, like all sorts of applications that, that um, benefit from clustering techniques. And of course, information retrieval and search is, is a big, big domain, and which, is, which is why we're all here. So, um, and lots of more applications. I think, yeah, the, the, the most uh, famous example would be Google News clustering. If you uh, type in a query like open source here, you would see that below it would cluster a bunch of articles together uh, that happen to be like on the same topic. So you could immediately, if you're interested in a topic, you could sort of click through these articles. So Google News does, uh, have a, has a clustering algorithm that figures this out automatically. Okay, now onto a bit more uh, detailed bit of the theory behind it. So let's say you have a data set uh, with only like two dimensions. So you can, you can plot it on a, on a plane like this. And uh, you have some different points. Um, and uh, another name for a point is like a vector. So a vector in, two, in a two-dimensional space. That's basically the idea. If you, if, you want to do, if you want to do clustering, everything has to be transformed into a vector. And um, the idea is that if you have a cluster with some vectors in it, a good cluster, you have vectors that are very, very close to each other. The, so the in, intra-cluster distance is uh, relatively small. And um, at the same time, you would like to have the inter-cluster distance uh, a bit larger. So you can sort of see that different things belong to different clusters. Uh, another thing, uh, another important concept is the cluster center, or the centroid, which is a computed vector. So it's not an actual item in your data set, but it's computed based on patients in your cluster. It's used by a lot of algorithms. And now onto the, the most basic uh, clustering algorithm, which is k-means. And the idea is, um, you have to specify the number of k, which is the number of clusters you will get at the end. Uh, 
And uh, what it does is it randomly picks a bunch of vectors from your data set as sort of the initial clusters. And then like for every iteration, it tries to add uh, nearby vectors uh, to the initial clusters. And at the end, it will sort of move the centroid, the, the, the cluster around. So uh, the, the distance becomes uh, smaller. And after a while, this will converge because you have to specify a threshold. And if no additional factors can be added, then the algorithm is converged. And then you have your clusters. So that's, that's the, the, the real basic k-means algorithm. OK, so now I just told you a little bit about uh, what, what clustering is. And um, now we'll tell you about Mahat, how much you can do with that. So Mahat has a, a bunch of uh, machine learning features you can use. First is uh, collaborative filtering, which is uh, doing recommendations. And um, second, of course, is uh, the clustering, which we were going to be talking about. And the third is cl um, classification. And that's uh, used, for, for instance, to determine uh, if an email is spam. So you can, you can train a classifier on an existing set of uh, emails. And you can say, this is spam, this isn't spam. And it will learn to figure out what, uh, what's spam or not. And there are, like, there are a lot more algorithms, actually, in, in, the, in the project. So uh, the project itself, it started in 2008. Um, the, the goal is to create all kinds of scalable machine learning algorithms. A lot of them run on Hadoop, uh, though not all. And um, the community is, uh, is growing steadily. Like More people on the mailing list, uh, more activity. Uh, and um, version, uh, now it's version. 0.5 and version 0.6 probably at the end of the year maybe. Okay, so how, how do you how do you work with Mahout then? Usually you would you would run a bunch of programs uh, through the Mahout script. So in this case, if I just run Mahout, you get a, a listing of all kinds of different programs, all kinds of algorithms you can use. And I think maybe now there's like uh, 30 different uh, programs you can run. And uh, you know the idea is that in order to to get a certain result, you have to Run, run them in a certain sequence, like uh, I, will, I will go into that later, what, what kind of sequence. And then you would get your results you can work with. <laughs> so as you see here, it, it also looks for uh, Hadoop because most of the stuff runs on Hadoop. So you can like, uh, you can just launch a job uh, through, through a cluster if you have your Hadoop stuff set up. In, in this case, I, I, I didn't uh, add my Hadoop uh, setup here, so it runs a local. Uh, every program also has a help function, so you can, uh, for example, look at, uh, at the help of k-means. You get a nice overview of uh, some like generic options, which are the options for Hadoop, and uh, the job-specific options, like uh, specifically for k-means. So all these all these jobs have different configurations. So um, yeah, like input, output, all these uh, things. If you want to use Java, you can also uh, run the, the drivers because the drivers are actually called from the from the script, but you can just run them. Um, directly uh, using the Hadoop tool runner, for instance. You specify a configuration object and uh, the, ar the arguments uh, as, an, as an array of parameters. OK, now we'll get into uh, the text clustering process a little bit more detail. So at the beginning, at the top left, you would have uh, maybe a directory of text files or a Lucene index, maybe. The first step you need to then do is to convert, convert them into a sequence file. Uh, Hadoop sequence file, which has uh, the ID of the document and the actual text of the document. And once you have this text, it will be turned into a vector. And at the same time, it will extract a dictionary with like all the, all different terms, so you can sort of see what what term was at which position in the vector. And also, it runs another job in the Mahout is to find interesting engrams in the in the text or shingles. So that these are these are and grams that are statistically uh, occur more than uh, than just by chance. So you, you would find interesting labels to use for your cluster, consisting of several terms next to uh, next to each other. So it does this, and once you have your vectors, then you can run like any kind of clustering algorithm on it. In this case, for example, k-means. And the k-means, what it does, it creates two different outputs. One is uh, the, is the cluster mapping, which is the cluster ID, and the centroid. On the right, that's the value. Um, and of course, uh, later you will use the centroid and the dictionary to sort of uh, see what the, what the cluster label would uh, be. And uh, the points mapping uh, is the mapping between uh, like which which point is in which cluster. 
And in order to actually run this in Mahout, you would have to run these, these three jobs. So the sec directory job would create a uh, directory of um, text files, turn them into sequence files. The sec to sparse uh, transforms the sequence files into vectors, sparse vectors. And the k-means uh, job does, does the actual clustering. OK, now it's time to, uh, to get into a, like, a real example. So we're going to cluster the Stack Overflow posts. Every month, Stack Overflow creates, uh, creates a dump of like almost all their, all their data. And uh, for instance, the post, uh, last time I checked in April, was uh, five and a half gigabytes. Um, and well, yeah, it would be fun to use Mahout to sort of extract the tag cloud from it, see what, what we find. In this case, I will go into even uh, a little bit more, more detail because there are some tricks involved to actually uh, process the output in order to do like actual demo. So we start, of course, with some pre-processing you always have to do. Um, this is not a part of Mahout, obviously. So I had to write like a job that extracts the title of the, uh, of the post and, and, and the content. And what will happen is I need to uh, actually um, get two outputs. First, the, like the raw text, which I will factorize in cluster, which is the, the upper uh, process. And then the lower process needed to get the, the actual original content, so the title and the ID of the post, because I need that later to index it and to properly display it on the screen. So these are different outputs that later will be joined together, because once I've done the clustering and once I have my post ID and title, I will join them together in like one format and then they can be indexed at, at once. And once they're indexed, we can, we can look it up, we can uh, see what kind of clusters we have. <coughs> and ideally, we would have like a cloud uh, below with some words you, you could expect in the Stack Overflow or dump. So how do you implement this? Well, you, the, the pre-processing, you, uh, you have to write some kind of job for it to uh, do some XML, HTML parsing. The vectorization process, uh, you, run this, you run the sector sparse job from a HUD, but you can plug in your own analyzer. Um, yeah, and the clustering you, you run, of course, you run them out uh, clustering job. Indexing is, is done as well, obviously. <coughs> so now I will go into these steps like in a little bit more detail. So uh, sector sparse uh, has uh, quite a lot of options. Like I said, you, could, you can specify your analyzer. You can uh, specify a maximum document frequency percentage. So if you, if you set this um, value very low, then uh, it means that uh, frequent terms will be, will be uh, pruned out of, um, out of the vectors. And uh, so th this will prevent a lot of stop words from, uh, from occurring into your, uh, into your, into your cluster. Uh, you can also specify a minimum document frequency uh, for the vectorization. Okay, and then it's time to run an algorithm. There are many different, many different algorithms in uh, Mahout. They all have their sort of pros and cons. I mean, k-means uh, is really simple. It scales well, it converges uh, quickly, but it also has some, has some problems I'll get into later. Fuzzy k-means uh, uh, allows you to have sort of overlapping clusters. And there's some of the other algorithms that, um, uh, that are a bit, a bit more uh, involved. Um, and uh, some of them uh, actually uh, they, they should scale, they sh should scale a little bit, but uh, there still are some problems with it. But uh, in this demo, I will, I will sort of show you k-means. Okay, the indexing. Uh, like I said, I had to do some custom coding to get, uh, to, to, to join the data together, so, sort of my clustering results and the original data, and then index it. So what I did is I created basically two different kind of documents, the, the clusters with the cluster ID, the name and the size, the number of documents in it, and the posts. Like the post ID, the cluster ID, which is the same as the cluster ID, actually, so you can join them together, and the title. Okay, now it's time to uh, show you what, what, uh, what I got. So here's a, a little screen I made. It's just a, a page which uh, does some calls to Solar and uh, gets the clusters. If I just do a search here, I get everything uh, back. So I found like uh, 500 tags because I specified case uh, 500, so it fixes the clusters. <coughs> you can sort of scroll through them, and I sorted them uh, alph alph alphabetically. And if I then click on one of the one of the tags, you, you would see here what kind of documents uh, belong inside the cluster. And I also add some highlighting, so you can see if it occurs in the title. But actually, I didn't show the content of the document, but I did use the, uh, I did use it for 
the clustering process, but I only show the title. So, and um, well, one thing that's uh, that's obvious, um, that's actually a flaw in, uh, in K-means, is that here you can see command line, and you see command line again. So it has has two clusters with the same label, and maybe they should be merged into a bigger cluster. And the problem is that uh, K-means can it just randomly picks initial clusters. And uh, if it doesn't do a very, very good job, you, you get stuff like this. So um, that's, uh, that's one of the downsides of this one. Um, but as you can see, yeah, like functional programming, that's nice. So it you actually use the n-grams to figure out like, hey, functional programming, that's, a, that's like uh, a term that's uh, interesting in the, in the data set. So you can see here some documents that belong to it. Okay, some conclusions. Uh, well, I think clustering is a lot of fun. I think it's a lot of fun to play with, to have, have a data set, to run some stuff on it, and to sort of see what you get, optimize it. Also, it, it, also it can take a lot of time. It's difficult to get right. So that's, that's one of the challenges. Um, and certainly, uh, the factorization process and creating labels can be improved. Uh, one of the things that is uh, actually a, a gyro issue is to to use the, the engrams to uh, improve the factorization. So you first find out interesting engrams and you then uh, tweak your analyzer so it recognizes the, um, the, the engrams in the text. So you, you get better factors. <coughs> so that's, uh, that's one thing. And also one thing that's a bit lacking is uh, ways to sort of evaluate your clusters. I mean, you could sort of see the results and see, oh, this, this isn't really right. But I think it's, um, it's nice to have some metrics that you can sort of see like which algorithm uh, it's working, and you know, I, I can sort of tweak it better. So that's uh, some of the things I found. These are some, here are some references. Uh, there's some Howden Action Book just released, uh, which also describes uh, a lot of this stuff. And um, of course, if you're interested in how you can join the mailing list or check uh, some of the Jira issues. And of course, uh, go to Search Workings to check out some uh, blogs I wrote on the, on the topic and uh, for the other people who work on it. OK, it's time for questions. Um, yeah, well, roughly, uh, each, each step uh, takes uh, a lot of time, or is that uh, the three text steps you showed, uh, is there a great difference in computation time, or is that pretty much bad? Or? Yeah, it depends. I think especially, uh, for example, if you, have, if you want to find n-grams, that, uh, that can take a lot of time if you make your the size of the n-gram is very large. It, 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 it's not a linear scalable thing. So usually I use an n-gram size of two. That's reasonable. And also the clustering, it, yeah, it can, it can, take, a, can take a while. Um, but of course, uh, one, one of the problems also is that I had to create some extra jobs to do this, to join this data together. And that also, that also takes a lot of time. And uh, I mean, it would be nice, uh, for instance, if you could somehow um, index up front and then sort of add the clustering information later and uh, I think I don't know if there are, there are ways to do that now but maybe like in a new zine version or something but I would have to see that. Where, uh, you have your thoughts on how you can do incremental clustering uh, adding new documents as it, let's say you have a stream of documents mm -hmm. as new artifacts so uh, you don't want to recompute your clusters every minute mm -hmm. how would you go about uh, figuring out the clustering yeah, you can actually, um, because the algorithms, uh, you can run them both sequentially and um, MapReduce. And um, so what you can do, if you already have a bunch of clusters, you can, uh, uh, if you have a new vector coming in, you can, let, you can iterate through all your clusters and just add it to the, to the closest one. So that's something you could do. And then you can maybe like every, every day or something, you could recompute the whole thing again. So the, yeah, the, the way you have, it's sort of a hu hy hy hybrid approach where you just, you, 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 you do run once, like every, every day, and then keep adding <coughs> new stuff. So yeah, you, you can do that. Uh, will be supported in how or you have to write a custom log for Yeah, you have to write some custom things for it. But the, the, the API supports uh, like all these things you want to have, like what's the distance between the vector and the cluster, and all, these, all, these, uh, all this stuff you need is in there. But the actual job of um, adding it or looking up the clusters, you have to do yourself. Because the clusters are stored in a sequence file, so you have to maybe write some code to load the clusters in memory. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's uh, what you can do. Yeah. yeah? Is all the source code for the uh, example, the demo that you gave, available online? For later Not yet, no. Not yet. No, I, I, I think I uh, intend to, yeah.
Any other questions? You can really see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, the demo. If you look at the, the time spent mm -hmm. um, to build it, would you see, well, where's the, the most time with this to build my help stuff, or with pre process the data, or to build like the journey of data and fade it into solar? Yeah, I think that's actually uh, most of the work. You know, yeah. the, the joining the data, because also another thing is that um, the clustering output has, uh, the key is the cluster ID yeah. and the value is the centroid. But when I want to join stuff, I want to actually, um, uh, no, sorry, the, the key is the cluster ID and the value is the, uh, is the post ID. So when I want to join, I actually have to create a job to reverse it so I could do a map side join. So, you know, I have to create these kind of jobs. Can you give us some example of uh, like what is the largest clustering job, classification job you have run, and how many machines uh, did you like exactly how much time it takes? Uh, yeah, I did um, uh, because now I use, I use like a, a, a small piece, but I, I once uploaded uh, the entire Stack Overflow, like five and a half gigs, to uh, uh, to an EC2 cluster, and um, I think it, it ran maybe for like one and a half hours or something. But it's also because of all the all the other jobs, and I must say that I didn't really benchmark that that, that code. So it could be that maybe the pre-processing was a bit was a bit inefficient. So it's difficult to say. But um, the, the clustering itself was was pretty fast actually. But all these all these other stuff. Hmm? How big was the clustering? I think it was uh, ten uh, machines or something. Yeah. Yeah. Did you compare um, the k-means clustering? To um, the other error, which you showed, for example, the, the uh, LS8 uh, cluster and stuff, that seems to be also available in Mahout uh, concerning the quality of the clusters. Do you make a comparison? Yeah, the, the LDA, I, um, um, I'm not really sure. I, I, I tried that, but it, um, I found it, uh, I, I got a lot of stop words with it to, at the beginning. But I, I must say, I'm, I'm not that familiar with that specific algorithm. Um, and I, I've heard from, from other people that it's very uh, CPU intensive. It's, it's, a, it's a very, um, very intensive uh, algorithm. Yeah? Have we done much clustering on non-natural languages like machine-generated data, like say log, log entries, for example? Uh, so the, the question is, is if I've done... Yeah, if, but are you any advice for running clustering against uh, like, Machine, machine data. Yeah, I think you would have to. Um, let's see. Um, well, it depends if you wanna uh, if you wanna do numerical or or text clustering. I mean, you can imagine if you do uh, log files, they have like a, a timestamp or anything or cer certain other information, or you just wanna like um, look at the text only. Then you have to sort of parse the text text out and then and group uh, things together. So, for example, if you have a log4j files, for instance, then you could uh, maybe um, uh, maybe cluster on the exception messages, uh, but you have to be careful to uh, write an analyzer that sort of uh, works around the stack traces and the line numbers so that you don't cluster, that you get like different uh, stuff together that shouldn't be there. So I think, uh, yeah, that, that would be important. The question is, uh, what is it? we have in the rate of background is compared to KMUs or other algorithms? Uh, what I what I know about it is that um, I think they also have an approach where they s first sort of try to find the labels of the clusters and then sort of try to see uh, what the, what the clusters could could be. Uh, and I, I do know that um, I heard that uh, it's not designed to be highly highly scalable in a way that, uh, for example, one of the MapReduce uh, uh, algorithms are. Can you elaborate a little bit about end of the processing chain? What is the, the representation of the clusters? Is it a sequence file Yeah, I can show you a bit of the code. Uh, what I do is I start with um, I start a solar server, and I configure basically the out the output path where where all the outputs will uh, will go underneath. Uh, next, you see uh, you see this code here. Oh, is the actual uh, is is actual the Pre-processing, so I actually parse the post and I extract the text. And next is the sector sparse job, so I, I convert it into uh, vectors here at the top. So I use it, use, it, use it the tool runner. 
Then I run the, the k-means clustering algorithm. And now comes the, the post-processing where uh, the results are uh, indexed. So what you can see here, clusters uh, star final, which is a glob pattern you can use to uh, figure out the, the, the directory of the contents of the last iteration. This was added recently because uh, in every, every iteration, k-means writes to a different uh, directory and uh, it uses the final uh, suffix to specify this is the last iteration, now I'm done. So if you read from that directory, you get, uh, you get the clusters. And this job here is to uh, reverse the um, mapping from cluster to points to points to clusters. So then we have my points uh, and title, I can do, it, uh, do a join, which is done by the cluster joiner. And then I have an indexer, which actually indexes the stuff. So you can see here, uh, I have, uh, my hout has, uh, has nice utilities to iterate uh, through a sequence file. Um, so you can see here, it grabs a text uh, with the ID and the cluster, iterates through it, uh, it gets the cluster and uh, the, the cluster ID. And then you can, we, we add, we, we index every cluster with the name and the size. And um, we add it to the index, we do a commit here, and then we in the also index the posts with the, the title and the content. And then there, there, then there is some code to figure out uh, what, what label belongs to which cluster. And the way it works, you, you take the centroid with, uh, with the vector and you basically um, sort on the highest weight. You pick the index of that weight and look, up, look it up in a dictionary, then you have your label. So this is some code to get actual cluster labels. Did this sort of answer your question? Sure. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay, thank you.